um, just so what we'll be able, we'll have this recording available and to all of the folks who have registered we will send up a send a follow-up email that will have this the link to this recording in it so you can certainly come back and look at it but you can also forward it to others um, and then we'll actually have a, a set of resources also that come in that follow-up email too but know that it's being recorded um, and uh, that we'll have it for so in case you don't quite get the, the slide or the whatever that you think you wanted um, it'll be there for you next time too so with that um, I want to introduce then um, Dr. Patricia Irwin from Kentucky um, Educational Television and I'll let you take it away um, let me I'm going to stop sharing my screen here really quickly and Patricia, you want to unmute and um, say hi, and then you can share your screen. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you so much, Patty. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on, on where you are. Um, as Patty said, I'm Patricia Irwin. I'm with KET. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you all. Uh, oh, I think I'm, I'm going to roll with it. Yep, looks like it's going. Looks like you're doing well. All right. Okay. Okay, everyone. Um, so as Patty said, we're going to be talking about some workforce uh, development resources that we have available in PBS Learning Media. So the title of our uh, today is Get Ready for Work and Have Fun Doing It. Um, so a little agenda here. We're going to talk a little bit about contextualized instruction, just a, a general definition. We're going to talk a little bit about the instructor perspective uh, as well as the student perspective. And then we are going to dive into some of the resources that we have available within PBS Learning Media. So contextualized instruction, this is a term that we're hearing more frequently, uh, especially as it relates to the process of getting our learners career ready or workplace ready. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the definition of contextualized instruction, also known as contextualized teaching and learning or CTL. Uh, so CTL is a uh, diverse family of instructional strategies designed to more seamlessly link the learning of foundational skills and academic or occupational content by focusing teaching and learning uh, squarely on concrete applications in a specific context that is of interest to the student. That's kind of a mouthful. In other words, CTL is a process built on the recognition that some students learn more effectively when they are taught in a hands-on, real-world context uh, rather than in an abstract manner. So in light of these definitions, um, what are some ways that you contextualize? So what I'd like for you to do is to take a moment to think about some of the ways that you currently implement this practice. And then I'd like for you to um, use the chat box to share some, it could be a word or a phrase that describes some of the ways that you uh, currently contextualize instruction. Great, it'll take a couple minutes. So I don't know if you're, are you looking at this, Patricia? I am, I see, um, I think this is a response. Uh, use computer lab software, uh, someone uses videos, okay. Great, YouTube, okay, all right. Uh, PowerPoint, great. Uh, teach the class or project. Okay, uh, so some of you, okay, do a project with the class. Okay, good, good. So we have uh, used computer lab software, videos, integration of uh, YouTube with hands-on instruction. Okay, good. A project with the class. 
online modules very good. Um, use examples or additional exercises related from the training curriculum, okay? Ah, someone has a, a program that trains janitors and they're using phones and email to help the workers write report notes or text messages to their supervisors. Okay, that's good. Uh, writing skills English mixed with their, their work experience. Okay, great, great. These are really good examples. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about what you as instructors do to contextualize your curriculum. Um, I'd like to take a moment to look at the um, student contextualized instruction from the student perspective. So we have a video clip here that we're uh, going to check out. My name is James Hooten. I have a young young son and daughter. Um, so I, I look at him as one day my, my daughter will be married. Uh, I won't want her to come home with a man that uh, one can provide, be a loving, caring father for you know her kids. And I wanted my son to have someone to look up to, to be a productive citizen in the world, uh, to put his footprint in the world as well. So I had to get myself together in order to teach them that. So I joined Youth Bill, uh, learned the basic carpentry skills. Uh, I did really well as a student. They hired me on the next year. Uh, I got to work with the construction manager uh, side by side, learned some of the estimates day in, day out, daily things, and eventually I ventured out and started my own business. My experience coming back to school was, was kind of shaky because of prior experience with school. I, just, I was a failure at it. That's how I looked at it and viewed it. The youth bill support uh, is tremendous. The skills that the youth bill has uh, taught me is math, uh, English, of course, writing, those things I use daily, um, giving estimates. I wouldn't be able to give an estimate if I didn't know how to properly read a tape measure, learn square footage, linear foot, height, um, things of that nature. Uh, English itself, I'm constantly writing emails. Uh, being able to use, you know, proper English when you talking to a client, learning uh, how to build a house, uh, how to install a door, how to install a window, uh, is allowed to put food on my table. So without these skills and the staff that uh, taught me that, I don't think uh, I'd be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, they just showed me that if you stay persistent, stay on it, you know, we're, we're here to help you, that you can achieve what you set out to achieve with your education. Ten years ago, I wouldn't have seen this uh, coming. I don't think, uh, I, I really couldn't tell you where I would be, but owning my own business would probably be the last thing I would have thought of. Um, and it feels good, though. It just goes to show uh, once you make your mind up and you put yourself around the right people, uh, what you can do, you know, do with it. Okay, so <clears throat> this gentleman talked a little bit about his experience. Um, he what, went back to school. He it talked a little bit about the, the anxiety that he had many of, of our learners do coming back to school. Um, but what he learned, he talked about the uh, use of math or measurement uh, as well as writing in his job in construction as a carpenter. So this is sort of a snapshot of a, a student experience with contextualized teaching and learning. Um, we know that most of you work in learning centers without the benefit of authentic workplace experiences. Uh, so how can you make the content real to your students? So that brings us to some of the resources available within PBS Learning Media. PBS Learning Media is an online repository of over 100,000 learning resources. And what you see here are just some of the contributors. Uh, Library of Congress, Nature, Nova, Annenberg Learner. These are just a few of the contributors to PBS Learning Media. What you see here is a screenshot of the PBS Learning Media homepage. We'll go more in depth um, at the actual site in just a moment, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. PBS Learning Media offers professional development resources. We'll talk about those in a moment. 
as well as teacher tools such as this uh, puzzle builder. Resources are searchable by standards, by subject and grade level. Some of the content is downloadable, so you wouldn't need the internet in order to display them. You can save your favorite resources. You can organize them in folders, and you can share them with your class or with colleagues. Uh, so what we're going to do now is take a look. So here is the main page of PBS Learning Media. So as I mentioned the search options just a moment ago, um, here at the top of the page is a tab you can search by standards. There is a box here for you to enter a word or phrase for your search term. You can refine your search by grade level. As you can see here, it goes from, it includes pre-K K through 12, as well as 13 plus. You can search by subject. You see the various subjects listed here. And you can search by type. You'll see all the types listed here. As we move down the page, um, prominently displayed here on the left side of the screen are featured segments that are, are common. These featured seg segments change on a, on a daily basis and they are relevant to the time of year, to the season, or maybe a special holiday. Um, what just scrolled by was, uh, was this day in history. And so this changes on a daily basis. Uh, moving down the screen, you see the four main subject areas here. Uh, we have science, social studies, math, and English language arts. Each day they feature uh, maybe a video clip or a lesson. So this is a, a great place to, to do sort of a quick search if you're looking for lesson ideas. They are some a featured segment, but beneath that you can view additional resources. For science, you can see here, it's broken out by grade level, um, and you have the different branches of science. Life science, physical science, earth and space. And so each subject area is broken out in that way. As we move further down the page, um, in the PowerPoint just a moment ago, I mentioned uh, the puzzle builder. And here on the right side, you'll see productivity tools for teachers. And these, this feature is tools that you can use to create um, assignments or, or learning uh, activities for your students. We have a lesson builder, a storyboard, quiz maker, and a puzzle builder. I'll take a moment to show you the puzzle builder. Um, these are accompanied by a brief video tutorial that the first time you log in will pop up and walk you through the steps for doing this. So you can see there are a few steps here. You would enter your title. There's a space to type in instructions for your students. You can select the type of puzzle. You have crossword or word search. Our example was a word search. And you can select the level of difficulty and enter your terms and add them. Then you can save and assign or save and print to use later. In the, here on the left side, um, we have in PBS Learning Media, KET produced resources and collections. And as you can see, there, uh, there's a menu of, of options here. The um, video that we just watched was from the Dropping Back In collection. You see that here. What I'm going to focus on since we're talking about workforce development resources, I'm going to focus on two things we have that are geared to adult education. Uh, KET is the largest contributor of adult education resources within PBS Learning Media. So we're first going to go into adult education professional development resources. 
So what we have here are um, professional development resources and they are geared towards uh, the adult education field. The menu options are here on the left and there's a variety from power path teacher resources, um, math instructional strategies, teaching strategies which provides resources for adult educators. Uh, here in adult education classroom resources are instructional resources designed specifically for adult education. Um, Again, there are math instructional strategies, language arts resources for adult educators. I'm going to uh, focus on our work ready collection, um, which includes materials that will help prepare your learners for the workplace. So within this collection, we currently have two self-paced courses. I'm gonna talk a little bit about those. First, we have the interview workplace essential skills. Uh, this module covers a variety of topics related to the interview process and is designed just to get have your learners thinking about what's involved in the interview process. What do I need to do to get ready? So uh, as we have here in part one, getting ready involves doing your homework. So what we're going to, um, we have a little segment here here is a professional career counselor and she's talking a little bit about the importance of being ready for the interview what that involves so let's take a look you need to do your homework this is the biggest issue that employers bring up and tell me that people come into the interview clueless about their company clueless about who they are and clueless about the job they want so doing your homework means that you discover who is this company that I'm going to ask for a job or go to have a conversation to discuss a possible job. What do they do? What do they manufacture? What services are they in? Who is their audience or who is their customer or client? Minimally know that. Spend a half an hour on the internet. The information is right there. It's so easy for you to discover that. So okay, so um, as you can see, she's talking about the importance of, of getting ready for the interview and how to do that uh, with the internet search. This lesson also covers commonly asked interview questions. Um, you have to be able to to address, uh, talk a little bit about yourself. So as you can see here, some bulleted, commonly asked interview questions. This provides your learners the opportunity to begin to think about these questions and how they would respond. You'll notice that at the bottom of the screen here, there's a text box. So you have the option to type in your response to maybe two or three questions, save it, and then come back later and, and review. Uh, social media is very a re very relevant part of our everyday life. Everyone has a Facebook account or is on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, many times potential employees do check um, out social media profiles. So this um, slide talks about the importance of ensuring that your social media profile is squeaky clean, so to speak, with no photos or posts that could be offensive or off-putting. Webcam interviews have become increasingly popular, so it's not uncommon to have an interview via Skype or an online video calling service. Even though the interview is not in the traditional face-to-face -face format, it is important to be prepared uh, for this type of interview. So as you can see uh, the image of the gentleman here, he's appropriately attired for his uh, webcam interview and his background is is appropriate. Uh, you can contrast his appearance with this lady here who, uh, believe it or not, is having a, a webcam interview. So this could, could be quite a discussion about some of the, the things and the, about actually what's wrong with this, 
with this photo. So that's, um, I just wanted to touch on the, the interview. So that is, again, a self-paced lesson that covers what your learners would need to be begin thinking about getting ready for that interview. Also available in our Work Ready collection is a self-paced course, Communicating at Work. And this lesson covers the importance um, of communication, the communication skills, how to do so in a, a positive manner with colleagues, with superiors, in a professional and constructive way. Um, So this talks about the importance of uh, interpersonal communication and covers all the, the facets of communicating at work. I'd like to draw your attention to the support materials available. Many of the resources in PBS Learning Media do include additional support materials. So for this module, when you click on support materials, it opens teaching tips. And everything in this section is printable, as you can see by the little print icon here. So the support materials in this section talk about how to utilize um, this lesson in an interactive classroom setting. There's general information about the lesson. You can see the standards addressed. touches on some of the interactive tools available within this lesson. And then gives specific tips for um, integrating this lesson before the lesson, during, as well as activities for assessment or reflection. And there's also a space for educational standards addressed. So those are some of the things that we have available in our work ready collection that are a nice way to cover some of those work ready skills that, that our learners need um, for career readiness. I would, um, I want to show you some things that we have um, prepared for today, but before I move into the next section, are there any, any questions? There are, there, there's a couple of them just in terms of are these, um, so let's see, the first one is just saying, you know, how do we, uh, how do we do a site registration, et cetera, to actually use this, which I think is where you're going to go next, Patricia. Uh, sure. So site registration. Okay. <laughs> and then there's another that's, uh, there are two self-paced modules, like are the, the self-paced modules part of distance learning curriculum of workplace essential skills? I think that's the question. Are these two self-paced modules part of the distance learning curriculum of workplace essential skills? Um, the um, first is, is part of the workplace essential skills collection. The, the communicating um, at, at work is, is not. Um, I... Um, Sorry, I'm looking at the chat now, and so I, I, can, I can see this. So sorry, I've got two things going. Please bear with me, everyone. Um, yes, everything in PBS Learning Media is free. I, I was going to, um, I didn't want it. That is an excellent point. Um, there, we have opportunities just within, um, just our work within, not just here in Kentucky, but as we are in various places to to talk about our resources. Uh, we were at uh, Pro Literacy uh, a few weeks ago and talked about these resources available in PBS Learning Media. So we do use those um, opportunities. We have newsletter. Um, we have a tech teaching tips newsletter and there are several KET newsletters so that you can um, you can join to see what's new, what's happening within PBS Learning Media. Um, someone mentioned access to registration. So when you get to the, what I'll do is go to the main page here. Um, so I'm logged in. So you, 
you wouldn't see it now. But if you go to PBS Learning Media, um, there is a tab that says create an account. It's free. All you would have to do is click on that and you would just need to enter a username and, and password. And that's all that's needed for access to PBS Learning Media. Just a username and a password. There's no, no cost. There's not a, a detail form to fill out. Just username and password is it. I was just checking to see if there were. Okay. Um, do we want to email this into the email that confirms the newsletters? Uh, when you log in to uh, PBS Learning Media for uh, the first time, there it, there's a screen that you can check off your um, areas that are of, of interest to you. That is how you would sign up for, example, for the Tech Teaching Tips newsletter or some of the other uh, newsletters that I that I just mentioned. So that is before we um, before we finish today, I'll I'll log out and log in so that you can that you can see that. Okay. Any other questions before we move into? I think there was one question about can it be embedded into the as a link in Moodle? Oh. Yeah. Um. Now, which link are we referring to? Um, I, any of these resources, I think. Can we, can we put them as links in Moodle? Yes, you can. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, yes, go ahead and do that. Looks like there's a question that's related to, are you able to measure the site stats? Like, can you tell who's, yeah, he's, he's asking, are you able to measure the site stats um, associated with these modules um, so you can tell who's using them I think is what um, I think they are able to I think there there is a team and that would be part of our, our marketing department and they would have access to that sort of information who's law, who's accessing our materials in what what regions I, that is that would be a, our marketing our marketing team mm -hmm. okay giving you some links here in a second. Yeah, so we're giving you some links. So as I mentioned earlier um, in some of the, the search options, you have the option to, once you get in and, and start browsing, there's so much available and you can't possibly go through everything at one time. So you can save your favorite resources, you can and organize them in folders. So in preparation for today, what I have done is I have favorites and you'll notice I'm going up to my dashboard when you create your account and log in this icon does appear excuse me so I'm going to click on folders and what you see here are uh, some of our some common career sectors advanced manufacturing construction healthcare uh, information technology, restaurant and hospitality, transportation and logistics. So these are just a, a few, there are, are more career sectors, but we've chosen just a few common ones and gathered some PBS learning media resources. You'll see corrections is here as well. Now we know corrections is not a career sector. However, we know, also know that many adult educators do teach in correction settings. So we've included a few things there I'll, I'll talk about in just a moment. So here, in advanced manufacturing, there are, these are some things that I have, that we have collected from PBS Learning Media. Some things are career connections. I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. The first item here, hot jobs, um, advanced manufacturing's high tech career paths. This is a, a video and it also includes some support materials. We'll just take a, a quick look at this video. I'm Sam Tigner. I'm a precision machining apprentice here at Rolls-Royce Crosspoint. 
Rolls-Royce Crosspoint is a jet engine turbine factory. These are high technology jet engines that you'll see on the largest and the newest commercial airliners in service today. As you see behind me, I run these machines. A machinist is someone who simply manufactures things using machines. My specific job is actually broaching an IP disc. That means I actually take a series of tools to make a certain shape, and at the very end of those tools, I can cut any type of shape that I want. Machining is pretty much the most important part. Uh, so, as you can see just from that brief segment, this video uh, features uh, some tech workers in a, in a factory. They work in a factory setting. As you noticed in the lead in here, it's, it's different than a traditional factory, uh, your grandfather's factory. So they talk a little bit about what they do so you, your learners can get a snapshot of this aspect of, of working in manufacturing. This also features support materials uh, that we talked about previously. So you have a background essay here that talks um, a little bit about this aspect of factory work and manufacturing. You have discussion questions. This addresses skills that you would need to get an advanced manufacturing job, which is a, always an important conversation to have with your learners. Uh, follow up for additional resources and more information for teachers, an additional link as well as standards. So this um, video clip could be used in a, a lesson to talk a little bit about what's involved in advanced manufacturing and help your learners start to think about, again, maybe some of the skills that would be needed. Uh, that was a, um, a video that's broken, that ha can be used in a lesson. We also have career writing prompts. So uh, I'd like to take a look at this. This is very very brief, but can also start a, a conversation about some of the skills needed for workforce. My name is Fred Everett. As the Director of Manufacturing Support Services, I work with four or five different departments to support manufacturing operations. It's not just what you get done, it's how you do it. Treating other people with dignity and respect, not trying to make yourself look good by making someone else look bad and giving credit where credit's deserved, not trying to take all the credit for yourself. You'll find out that people will trust you and want to work with you and feel successful working with you because of the type of person that you are and that you value how you do the job, not just getting the job done at anyone or anybody else's expense. Okay, so here we have a, a gentleman talking a little bit about um, his work and the importance of um, how to treat others. And so this leads into a writing prompt question, what kind of person are you? So this could be a lead-in activity. Um, you'll notice in the introduction here, there's a, a suggestion for how this activity uh, can be used. And so this doesn't have support materials like the uh, previous um, video did, but again, it's a nice way to um, talk about some of the skills that are needed for, for career readiness, for being work ready. So that's our advanced manufacturing folder. Um, so let's take a look at another sector here. We have construction. So there are several things in this uh, folder. Some things are complete, uh, lend themselves to be a complete lesson. So and the, what we're going to look at now is um, the pipe fitter and the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a, an apprentice pipe fitter talking about how he uses uh, those key subject areas of math and science. We're going to look at just a snippet. It's very intriguing when I go in to uh, any big building, a school or a hospital, and now I have an understanding of the system that is there and what's hidden behind the walls and what's moving around people, and they have no idea that it's there. My name is Matthew McGinnis. I am from Fairmont, West Virginia, and I'm a second year apprentice in the Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Union based out of Morgantown, West Virginia.
I was looking to get into a trade uh, because I enjoy working with my hands and, and physical things. And I have family members that are in other trades. I have an uncle who is an electrician. And I spoke to him uh, about getting into the trades and he actually told me that this one was a good, in, good one to get into. Well, as an apprentice, we have in-school work um, two nights a week. We come for a few hours in the evening. And then we also have on-the-job training where we're basically kind of a shadow. You know, we go with someone that is already a journeyman that has been in the trade for a while and we follow them so that we can learn from them. Okay, so um, again, this video shows sort of what, what's involved in being a pipe fitter, their responsibilities. Uh, so again, a snapshot uh, of, that, of that trade. The support materials here, I'd like to draw your attention to here in four teachers. There's a social studies lesson plan and a science lesson plan associated um, with, this, um, with this clip. There are also uh, some interactive uh, materials within PBS Learning Media that lend themselves nicely to a contextualized approach. Uh, here we have a segment on re-roofing your uncle's house. So here's the scenario. Um, your uncle has hired you to put new shingles on his house. And so you are you have to figure out, okay, so what do I need to do? And so this module walks you through that process. So you'll notice there's it, in roofing information here, just some basics about roofing. And then calculating the area, there's the formula. So this touches on math, specifically geometry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, it is interactive. So to click on the tape measure, we need to we need to find our measurements here. And so you'll notice it will tell you the number of feet. And then you'll see on the right here that it has inserted that. So this could be um, you could break your students into groups to do this. Um, to see if everyone comes up with the formula. This could be an interactive classroom activity. Uh, so that's just, um, that is a, another good activity related to um, the use of math related to something real life every day or workplace skill. Uh, one other uh, career sector, we have several folders here and you all may have seen Clay has placed links within the chat uh, feature. I'll, I'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, we have healthcare here. Uh, the career connections shows you a specific um, career and you get a sense of what's involved. Uh, phlebotomist, radiologist, sonographer. And we also have folders for information technology, restaurant and hospitality, and transportation and logistics. Now the corrections folder um, has several items that may be of interest. Uh, for example, analyzing um, its geometry and energy efficiency could possibly lend itself to a lesson. Um, we know that within corrections, there are limitations. So this has um, support materials that could be, there's a video clip that you can download so you wouldn't need the internet to view it, um, and support materials discussion question, student handout, teaching tips. Um, there's the angle on pool, which examines pool from sort of a geometry perspective. The other items here, um, for example, discuss, there are community and family guide dealing with addiction. Uh, these address perhaps some of the social issues that learners in, in those settings would be um, dealing with 
typically. So um, the links that we've provided show you, um, you can copy and paste those links and access the, um, these folders in PBS Learning Media. You can add to once you um, have your own search. I'm going to, I saw the chat come up. I didn't, I was going to see if I had a, a question here. Just, they're just appreciating the resources, which is great. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yes, there's a lot, and you all have access to these resources. So let me, I'm going to pop out of my, pop back into my. So you all, um, these are the links that, that Clay put in the chat uh, feature. So these are the links to the workplace resources. And then there's a, also a link to the corrections resources. My information will be provided, my contact information. So if you'd like, I can email this to you as a Word document um, for, for easier access. Uh, so that, that's, those are uh, some of the resources. Again, everything in PBS Learning Media, everything that we have covered within PBS Learning Media is free. So there's no cost. And as you can see, there, there really is a, a, a variety of, of useful information and, and resources. So there's a question asking, can you go through how to get to all of this again? <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, like the folders in um, PBS Learning Media? Right. I okay, think all right. Sure, sure. Um, let me get out of this. I'm also not going to escape. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, so let's go back to PBS Learning Media. So these folders and you'll have access to them we created so when you go to the um, main page as a matter of fact let me log out so you all can see that that process okay so when you first when you go to pbslearningmedia.org um, there is an option to create a free account so you would click on create a, a pbs account Oh, that's not going to let me do that because I'm not. Let me see if it's going to let me log out. Uh, so you would, um, new to learning media, sign up. So here's the information that you would um, need to complete. And then once you have first, first and last name, email, confirm that, of course, create a password and confirm that uh, the school zip code of, of your um, center, or pro the zip code for your center or program is fine, and then register. So I'm going to log in again and talk about how you would Okay, um, so to, I logged in and you're able to see my dashboard. So to, so if you decide, okay, I want to create my own folder, say I'm in um, science resources. Um, and I, I don't know if this, let's see if this is a, uh, video. Okay, so this is CSI Wildlife, and I decide that I think this would be something helpful for my learners in our science unit. Um, you'll see a heart here on the right, um, at the, on the left, excuse me, at the very top. So if I like this, I can click on that and make it a favorite, and then it becomes filled in. So I can do that for everything that I see once I enter my enter and refine my search. I did this simply. Um, but if I want to create, if I decide I want to create a folder, maybe I want to add a new career sector to what I have, I would just click on folders. I would click on add a new folder. I would give it a name and then save it. 
and then that item, then I would have a folder. So when I want to place items within my folder, I would go back to my favorites. Um, there's my CSI wildlife. I would check it. I would click add to folder and then I'd have the option to place it in whichever folder that I chose and click save updates. So that's sort of how you get started from uh, creating your account to um, getting your folder set up. Does that, was that does that make sense? Does anyone have any, any questions about that, about this process or, or anything that I've covered? So can oh, you, you're just to, to um, clarify, Patricia, I think um, those links that you put in here are basically folders that you've created and then you yes. to, to actually save those resources out on your own dashboard. Is that true? Uh, yes, you can save that. So when you, um, you would be able to access the, um, the folder, you would have to, you would have to save it within your, um, within your own account dashboard and folders within your own account. Got it. So you're giving us, those links are important because they're shortcuts to stuff you guys They're shortcuts. That's yeah. exactly right. So that, that would save you, uh, hopefully a couple of steps. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. That's awesome. Very great. Um, all right. Um, what other questions might folks have for Patricia? There's plenty in here. I think that's what's, I think that's what's really nice about the way you've um, pulled them together in collections, Patricia, and, and, and made it, you know, pretty easy for people to go to get the support around it and actually kind of almost turnkey. Yay, let me use this resource with my learners. It's great. Right, right. Um, and so you're absolutely, there's so much available. And, and once you get in and get started there, it really is user friendly. Um, and so hopefully these things will be a nice, um, a nice head start as, as you all use some of these workplace resources. Great. Um, so there, there's a Question from Jim Evans here. Um, I can ask that instead of go right ahead, Jim. That'd be easier. <laughs> well, we're we're a, we're a member of, and I'm a superintendent in Lee County, uh, Kentucky school district. So we're a member of Digital Promise League of Innovative Schools. So we are our GED program is housed here at the Board of Education, which, mm -hmm. which is down the hall. But we're also doing, the reason I'm on the webinar today, we're also doing some things at our area tech center, which is traditionally called the vocational school for adults in our community taking uh, classes after hours using our uh, ATC instructors. They're dual credit certified or college credit certified. My question was just gonna be, and I typed all that out, but I, I see I misspelled a word there. But anyway, are there opportunities for school districts since we are a member of the league or is this a different uh, offset of the of digital promise or part of the ongoing work? Um, so, so kind of all of the above. Okay. Um, yes, there are definitely opportunities to partner that we can, we can think about and in particular with KET there in Kentucky, there may be yeah. plenty there. Um, but then also, so I'm the director, and I forgot to say that uh, when I introduced myself here, but I'm the director of the adult um, learning initiative here at Digital Promise, and we're just another program and, and project that runs parallel to the League of Innovative Schools. Um, okay. A lot of what we do overlaps, tons does, and so love to talk to you more about that, and we can figure out what, what, what might be interesting for you that we have to offer. The offer is too big a word. Where, where might we connect you and partner you up with the kinds of resources that would be useful to you? That's kind of where we excel. And, and we're, we're to the point where we're a very rural school district, uh, small, limited access, there's not a college close by within an hour. Mm -hmm. So we're to the point of trying to, to provide our adults in the community an opportunity to use our facility to either get a GED or uh, college coursework and things like that. So, but, um, I know, do you know Sarah Shapiro? Of course, yeah. Okay. Of I'm course. not sure. I know she left to go to PBS, so I was trying to make a connection there. So I emailed her just a minute ago, but and then I I missed the first 10 minutes of the webinar. That's why I didn't get the introduction, so I apologize. Oh, no, oh, no worries. No worries at all. But, yeah, so um, 
so yeah, so Sarah did did recently leave, and she is definitely at PBS. Um, okay. But I haven't actually, I haven't kept up closely with like, okay, what's she working on? But I know she's still probably coming up to speed there and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm sure there's plenty there. Um, but yeah, we can, um, maybe what I do is just get your um, uh, contact information and we can we can get in contact and figure That'd something out. That'd be great. I, I'd love to get our ATC principal around and around the table. And then of course, uh, our adult ed director, which is right next door, and maybe have a conference call and see since we are working with, with Digital Promise and, and, and the league on, on school level initiatives, maybe there's something we can broaden it for our adults in our community. That's what we're wanting to do at this point. So give more opportunities for those folks. Awesome. Great. So um, actually, Jim, if you just drop me an email, that's pretty easy to do. And I can get in touch with you. I'm Patty, P-A-T-T-I, at digitalpromise.org. Okay. All right. And that's super simple there. P A T T I. P A T T I. Yeah. Okay. Digital promise. Fortunately, <laughs> it's an easy one. Because if I were to give you my last name, and if we had done it by last name, you'd be like, "What? This is too hard." Okay. I will definitely email you here just in a little bit. Okay, that'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you all. So, um, any? It doesn't look like anybody else has any questions here, but um, okay. so Patricia. Um, I think I'll just reiterate what everybody else is saying here. There's a very rich set of resources here. And so I encourage everybody on the, on the webinar to, to go, go, you know, go now maybe and um, create your account and explore and actually use these resources that um, Patricia has um, provided. Like I said, I will, um, I will follow up with an email probably either later today or early tomorrow morning that, that, um, both has a recording of this webinar if you want to share this with someone else or rewatch it yourself, all of that. And we'll also have those links to those resources and folders that Patricia put in the chat here too. Um, and then I'll also have her contact information so you can get in touch with her directly around, you know, more ways in which they, they have seen folks implement and use these resources. They're a wealth of information over at KET. And so um, and I'm sure they'd be happy to, um, answer questions and um, set you guys all up there too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know if you all can see, but my email address and phone number are on the screen. If as you start to um, dive in and explore some of these resources, as Patty said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be more than more than happy to help. I'm so glad um, to be able to join you all today. I hope that that what we shared is useful to you all in in your work. So, uh, thank you so much. I great. Can you do one thing for me, Patricia? Can you stop sharing your screen now? And I'm just going to quickly share. Um, sure, sure thing. Absolutely. And I will grab. Not that I just since I just said it out loud, it's pretty easy to get. <laughs> but <laughs> this is who. Um, so are here, like I said, you know, after this webinar, we'll send out an email and then this is my contact. So if anybody has any questions for me, it's pretty easy, patty at digitalpromise.org. Um, and I really appreciate um, all of you for joining us today. It was a nice big group here. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season because <laughs> that's where we are already. It's like, man, it's December and it's crazy, um, which is awesome. Um, so with that, I will, um, will conclude this webinar and I will stop the recording. We can go from there. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs>